uh, you might mention, remember I mentioned this morning that our board of directors stood up an uh, entity called the Regenerative Food Processing LLC. Um, that division is uh, responsible for overseeing all the processing for chickens that you were hearing about this morning. And it's located in Stacyville, Iowa. Um, so I have two folks here that work with us to tell you all about all the awesome work. And we also have some workers in the, in the house here, employees of the processing facility. And we're very, very proud about the work that we're doing um, in Stacyville, Iowa. So I want to thank Delicia and Arnolfo for being up here. And I'll let them take it, take it from here. Thank you. Do you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> wow. Um, I hope uh, every one of you enjoyed lunch. It's very good. Um, normally, I think after lunch, I tend to get sleepy. <laughs> I, I hope I don't get sleepy from here. <laughs> so um, yeah, it was powerful this morning. It was awesome information, awesome dynamics. So great. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to be here um, to share uh, some updates about the uh, the regenerative food processing, which is the Stacyville poultry plant. We're located in Stacyville, Iowa. Um, so my name is Arnulfo. Uh, I know I've met a lot of you guys. And then um, we'll let Delicia Garcia introduce herself. Hello, everybody. I am Delicia Garcia. I'm going to introduce myself more later, Arnulfo, but okay. thank you. OK. So um, I, the, first, the first thing I want to do is I want to introduce the, uh, the, the plant team members. And I would like for them to stand up, because I think it's very essential that they're here. They're part of the processing uh, at Stacyville, Iowa. So Darren. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Jose. Andrew. Talia. Thank you. Yeah. So, so these uh, these folks uh, make uh, part of our team at the at the processing facility, and it's amazing to have them um, there with us. Um, so, without without I further ado, I will have Delicia take care of the presentation, um, and um, right, Delicia. Okay. Like, you know, uh, the Regenerative Agriculture Alliance was created in 2018. Um, but our founder, Reginaldo, found this bottleneck about uh, to process their own chickens, the chickens from uh, Tree Range. And that was the reason because uh, when RAA started to raise a little more money, uh, we, we finally purchased this plant in 2020-2021. But before to tell more about this, I want to introduce myself. Thank you, Arnulfo, <laughs> who I am. Uh, my name is Delicia Garcia. I'm from Mexico. I came here three years ago. I was working in a swine, uh, industrial wine company in Illinois, and then I moved here. I had a bachelor's degree in food science in one of the most uh, prestigious university in Mexico that is about agriculture. Well, I'm going to start to tell about state civil poultry processing. We are located in North Iowa, uh, just in the border between Austin, Minnesota. And this is a strategic location because we, ca we couch a uh, Farmers from Wisconsin, Iowa, and Minnesota. So after 12 months of hard work, we started to process birds in November 2021. We processed 5,000 birds in 2021. And we grow up more. And we in 2022, we had 38,000 chickens. But we, we bet that uh, amount the last year, we had 57,917 birds, so chickens, turkeys, and capons. If you are wondering what is capons, it's a male castrated chicken. So 
With this amount, we also did uh, turkeys, 1,730, and then uh, also we processed 41,065 beers from tree range. You can see, you can see in the graphic, um, our biggest uh, busy month was September, and then was August and November. Like I mentioned, what do we process? The last year, we, do, we did uh, turkeys, capons, and, beer, uh, and chickens. But this year, uh, we are very blessed because we sent our application uh, in the beginning this year to the USDA to add in our HASA plan geese and dogs. Uh, we are very successful. So they accepted our application. They approved. So in this slide, you, you can see the products that we offer. Usually, we had a lot of customers. We are happy to share that we had 50 farmers the last year. So some of our customers had a special request, like a whole chicken, eight pieces, four pieces, two pieces. So depending to the farmer. And we're trying to use the whole chicken. Some of them use, uh, they ask us to say hers livers, and sometimes gizzard. And also, like you know, in, in some cultures, they eat too um, feet. Yes. Here, you can see our certification. Uh, we had uh, MOSA certified organic, that is uh, organisms that provide us like a, like a plant processor to uh, process chickens, organic chickens, and they can sell like a organic. It, it's very important to have that label to sell like organic. And also, like Arnulfo mentioned, we are federally inspected. So uh, you can see our label, and also we had USDA organic. Um, this year, um, we are part of American Association Meat Processor. That is, technic we received a lot of technical assistance about food protocols. But this is very, very important for us, quality and food safety. Something that I really had patience to tell about it because we take care about our product. We had that commitment to, to sell, to give our customers food quality chicken. So we follow all the street protocols that USDA said, like has a plan. What is has a plan? The HASA plan is the hazard analysis critical control point. And also, we had the SSOP, that is the standard operating procedure for the food processing industry. And also, people use the personal equipment protection. And also, we follow the rules about good manufacturing practices. Every time that we process our chickens, the USDA requests to send 13 samples, and after that, we need to do twice per month. So we take care about E. e coli and salmonella. You can see here, uh, as we are increasing our production, we need equipment. So in 2022, we had this roll stop mach machine that I love that machine because <laughs> it's easy to work. It's, it's faster, and we, we can have a a good presentation about our product. So also the last year, um, we had this amazing uh, convention that is uh, for tunnel bleeding. So an other, other important thing that we had this year is this amazing software that is called VistaTrack. In the past, in the beginning of the season, we do everything manual. So I remember one time, one of the employees who was on chair, he wrote down all the weight cases. So he was talking with other co-workers, and then he was distracted. We were there 10 p.m. <laughs> looking at that case that he lost. So with this, with this amazing software, we keep tracking about our product. And also, right now, we are receiving training to um, that tree range can scan their labels, and they can see all the information about that chicken. So that is easy to identify uh, the, their own product. So you can see that um, the thing that we had right now is that we are seasonal. So in, win in winter, unfortunately, in winter months, we close the plant. 
But that doesn't mean that the, we, we didn't work. We work in maintenance because you know, it's important to have a preventive maintenance plan. So we take care about the equipment, about the facility. You can see Darren doing some things uh, at the plant, cleaning the condensators and the fans, uh, putting the oil in the motors, cleaning the storage freezer, and doing a couple things, uh, electrical things. Also, uh, like uh, everybody mentioned, technical advice is very important because everything is changing. So it's important to know what is the new rules that the government uh, is giving every, every time. So it's important that, uh, about that, and that is the reason because uh, we attended uh, this year to EPP, that is uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. We met a lot of good suppliers and good people, and we also share about what kind of things we are doing. We saw amazing technology uh, for Beat plants, but also the thing is the same. We follow the same things and we had things in common um, if we are a small plant because you can see, but in a small. So, and also uh, we went to a trade show in uh, Iowa State University and we had the opportunity to uh, had a conference uh, in front of uh, a lot of farmers in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, and we also engage new customers and new farmers. It's important to share what kind of things we are doing. So, because a lot of people, they don't know that uh, uh, facility is located in North Iowa. So, we are very happy to share about the things that we are doing. Also, I, I was speaking a lot about product, but it's, it's, it's important about the product, but it's very important to the employees because without them, we can do nothing. Everything is possible for the employees. So that is the reason because we're taking care about the employees and I think that is the difference between big companies and small companies like our side because they are not only a number, they are people, they are person, they have families, they have stories to share. So, and that is the reason because we had time to celebrate together, birthdays, holidays, uh, spend fun time together and share our knowledge, our ideas, our, you know, things that happen in the, in the, in the processing rooms and stuff like that. So, that is, that is good to share uh, some pictures with, with you guys. Um, and also, we had activities with the whole ecosystem, uh, with <laughs> Regenerati Agriculture Alliance team members, uh, employees from the plant, and tree range farms too. You can see a couple pictures. And other important thing that I need to mention is that before to start the season, we had one week of training about food safety protocols. And also in, in the last day that, that we train people, we stay to the farm. This, this year, Reggie is gonna host us in his farm. So that is important that employees know where the, product, the chickens are coming because they feel more compromised to, to know all the sport that the farmer is doing in his farm and we take care of the product like it's all ours. So that is important to do that uh, fuel visit. Other thing important that I need to mention is the community engage, engagement. The last year we host Valeria Cano from Practical Farmers. So we gave a virtual tour in Spanish. So that was something good because all the fellows that is from Practical Farmers can see the things that we are doing. So it was a good experience. You can see here the goals that we had for 2024. We, the last year we applied for the local meat capacity grant. So we are hoping right now the answer about the resolution. And also we are working, we are very happy to working with the United Food and Commercial Workers International Union that here, is around here. <laughs> Thank you. And also, uh, like I mentioned, we're trying to diversify our products. So 
And that is the reason because we're trying to get a certification, hal halal certification. And also we are looking forward to working with Greener the World to get a certification too. Certification are important because our customers can go to other markets and expand their own markets. So also, like I mentioned before, we had uh, this year the value add processing, the ground chicken. We sent also the application for ground chicken, and everything is good right now. We had all the protocols, the HASA plans, and that is something that we celebrate together. Right now, the only thing that miss is the equipment, and that is the reason because we are looking for a small business loan. And also adding the geese and dogs, that is a good opportunity because we can, we, we would like to keep busy our employees in winter months. And that is the reason because we are looking forward to expand our business. And also other important thing to mention is that we had this year full-time inspector USDA. That is something great because usually because we are small plant processing, <laughs> the inspectors can and go. So we don't have like a full-time inspector, but this year it's gonna change that. So we are continuing to work building an ecosystem with the small farmers, like I mentioned. We had 50 farmers the last year. We, we are hoping to have and increase that number. So, and we hoping to inc increase our capacity the 80% of our production. Wow. Yeah, that's, we, we, it's, it's amazing. There's a lot of upgrades from, from where we started. We're so blessed to, to have captured Delicia to come on our side and, and at the processing plant. She's uh, amazing um, with her leadership and the knowledge of, of, of food processing. Um, so I have been at the plant for, uh, I think, a year and five months now. Delicia, how long have you been? Almost one year. Wow. In, in May 3 May, I'm going to do one year. Time goes fast whenever you're having fun, they say. <laughs> so yeah, it's been amazing work that, um, that we're doing there. And it shows the importance of small scale processing, you guys. I mean, you guys, I, I know a lot of farmers are here. You guys produce your own, your birds or your beef, et cetera. And there's, there's a bottleneck for, for small scale processing, right? Yeah. Yeah. There is a bottleneck. Um, so that's the importance of the RAA having this Nonprofit supported processing plant right in Northern Iowa. And also the community that we're building with farmers, like Delicia said, we have 50 farmers that we serve. So farmers from 30 birds to 1,500 birds a day with a street range, our biggest customer. Um, so that is, the, that is the importance. I cannot emphasize on that how important it is to have those support um, for those small scale processors. But with that, there's a lot of partnership that we need to make, and like how Deli mentioned, partners with, with different entities. Um, so we, we have here, and I want to invite them around up here, it's uh, Makoche Agriculture Alliance, right? Is that I say right? Um, so they're partners with us, they have a mobile processing, and I'll let them explain all about it, so. Can you hear me okay, everybody? Yeah. Um, my name is Jonathan Redow. I'm a member of the Oglala Lakota tribe from Western South Dakota. And like Ray, he talked about this morning, I wanna give a land acknowledgement that we come from our homelands in Western South Dakota and that we are on the original ancestral homelands of the Medwakatin and the Wakbekute Sisituan and that we are delighted to be here as guests. And every time I come somewhere, I always think about the billions and billions of dollars of wealth that has been generated on stolen land. So I wear my land back sweater proudly. I wear all of the atrocities that we face, you know, proudly because we're struggling through those. And so, you know, having said that, um, I work at Makochi Agriculture Development as a director of operations. I come from an extensive background in Indian gaming. So I know all about tribal casinos. I can talk to you for two hours about that. Um, I'm just learning about chickens and things. But uh, yesterday when I was at the plant with um, Arnoffel and his team, I talked about how we struggle with land access on our reservation. 
there's a lot of red tape for us to get access to our land. And I was telling him that deep down inside, I want to be on a horse hunting a buffalo. I don't want to corral a chicken in a little coop here and there. <laughs> but the reality is, is that that's where we're at with our land access. So I always tell people that we raise buffalo chickens. <laughs> and so, um, and so um, what we're doing at Makochi Agriculture Development is that we're a small nonprofit based in Porcupine, South Dakota, and we are just trying to change our food system. Our food system, when the buffalo was taken away, so was our economy. So we don't have economy on our reservation. Money is a foreign concept to us still. We don't understand it. We get money, we spend it. We don't know how to save, we don't know how to invest, we don't know how to, and we're really reliant on um, the state of South Dakota to feed most of the families. Probably 90% of the mouse that get fed on, in, on our reservation are from the SNAP program, the, the whatever, EBT, whatever you want to call it. And so we're here to learn, to partner with RAA. Um, I always get delighted when I hear Rahi talk because it's like I've seen Rahi do like 10 TED Talks now and I just, you know, always enlightened and I really enjoy listening to him. And so we're just here to learn um, to conversate, we have a mobile processor, we have five initiatives that we're working th through trying to, you know, change our food system, change the way that we struggle. Um, because when I think back to my childhood, I can still remember the worst feeling in the world and it's going to bed hungry. You're looking in the fridge over and over and there's nothing in there. And that's the worst feeling you can ever felt. And I felt it. And I know that there are still young people that probably still struggle through that today. So um, my role at Makoche is a direct, the director of operations, but I want to see this through. I, I am 100% committed to what we're doing and to the change that we're trying to make. And so, you know, raising chickens, well, I'll do it. You know, put a six by six, 16 foot board into the ground, you know, to build a pole barn, I'll do it. You know, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to move this forward and to try to change the system so that my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren have something that they can be proud of. And so we're just trying to establish this grounding for them to move forward, to feel better about themselves because there's a lot of ales. I mean, I challenge you guys later on to go YouTube, Pine Ridge, South Dakota, or Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And, you know, search that on YouTube. Watch the videos. Those are our realities. They're really, they're, they're real. And that's what we face back home every day. So um, I don't really have a whole lot to add other than that we're raising chickens. We raise chickens. Um, with me is my colleague, Tyler Eagleble. He's, uh, he's, he's a, he raised chickens in the past. So he's kind of the, he's our farm coordinator. And see, he'll, he heads up all of the, the stuff that we do around poultry. And so Tyler, I'll let him introduce himself and say whatever he has to say, but uh, we're delighted to be here, and I look forward to the conversations that we may have because I love to learn. I, I try to learn something new every single day. So um, thank you. Good, af good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Tyler Eagleble. I'm the farm coordinator at Makoche Agrico Agric Agricultural Development. Uh, sorry. Uh, I've been there uh, since last year of uh, May uh, in the past. All I did was laying cans. I grew, raised my own laying cans and went job to job everywhere. It's hard to get a job. As John said, in Pine Ridge, it's, it's unemployment rate is really, really high. So it's, it's hard to find a job. And once I seen farm coordinator open at Makoche, I jumped on it as soon as possible when I, <clears throat> especially when I seen, uh, I have to deal with poultry every day and it was just something I'm passionate about is uh, poultry and gardening. And I love my job. I have to say it every day I wake up just happy to go to work. Uh, right now at Makoche, um, right now I'm in uh, coming up on my fourth week. I have a seven week uh, uh, poultry producers course. It's for s small poultry producers. I'm trying to gained ac uh, food access in our community. As John said, a lot of people rely on SNAP benefits, uh, rely on the government to get uh, food on our reservation. So I, uh, we put the get, we developed this seven week course and one hour a week every Monday on Zoom. I have uh, 28 participants this year. 
uh, they'll come and take this course and I'll teach them everything, explain to them the history of the chicken down to the brooding, what's a brooder, down to the arrival of their chickens, how to successfully raise their chickens and how to bring them into our mobile processing plant and we'll process them for them. Uh, each family, once they completed the course, they'll get 75 birds each and we'll provide them with everything. Uh, we run off of a, a Salatin style, it's a Joe Salatin, I believe his name is. Uh, we run off of chicken tractors. It's a 12 by 10, two feet high chicken tractor and for the birds we get are Cornish crosses that the participants would get. So lifespan for them is uh, 49 to 56 days and bring them in and the fam once the family's done raising them, they'll bring them into our processing plant and we'll process them for them. And the families get to leave with over 200 pounds of chicken meat. And it's, it's a good feeling seeing the families pull in um, process their birds and seeing them drive away with all that chicken meat. It's a good feeling inside to have that. But uh, yeah, last year we had 14 families uh, that participated in the program. I believe the year before that was like eight. I'm not sure. Uh, each family, like I said, got 75 birds. So we roughly did around 1,100, 1,200 birds in our mobile processing plant last year. Uh, this year, right now, we, like John said, land access, uh, we got 40 acres of farmland uh, down at where our place is in Porcupine, South Dakota. And uh, right now, we're going with the, we're building a pole barn, a, product, a poultry production unit, and it'll have two paddocks. Uh, we're looking to get 1,500 birds. We're hoping to do it before July 1st. Uh, right now, it's I mean, our farm team, we have like five, six guys. So we're the ones that are doing all the work, building everything. So it's like uh, one of the guys on the farm team said, it's good that we're doing all this ourselves because we get to see everything put into this. We get to see everything built, everything that comes along with it. So that's what we have going on right now at Makoche. If uh, anyone has any questions, thank you. Awesome. Um, there, there will be uh, uh, some time for questions. I just like to end our this uh, whole presentation um, with this. So, I was thinking while driving here, I drove this morning to 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 Northfield, and I was thinking about what we needed to 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 share with you guys about updates about the plant. And I was thinking about continuous improvement. So. Since 2021, like Deli mentioned, there's been a lot of continuous improvement at the processor at, at that scale and growing. Added to that, there's a project going that RAA has partnered with Food Ops and MAD, if I'm not mistaken, to build a, a bigger facility. Uh, a project that will be for hazelnuts and other, I, I, I believe Ray mentioned it before, but continuous improvement. Um, like Deli mentioned, there's a, we're looking at value added. We're looking at ground chicken. We're looking at ground turkey. So continuous improvement. So that's the first thing that came to my mind. The second one is personal development or, or, or talent development. And, and that, that has been, I think, core of the processing plan. So we added Delicia, which is a huge, huge uh, addition to our team. The team members, they have huge experience. All these trims that they do and the packaging, they do it themselves by, by hand. I mean, all the cutting, cutting of breasts, ties, and all, all, all those trims and the packaging. So those two things, if, if, before we go to questions, if those, those two things want to keep in mind. So continuous improvement and personal development. Thank you. Um, before I get everyone stuck on all the atrocities and all the terrible things that happen on a reservation, there's a lot of positive growth, and I really believe that Makoche is a big part of that. Um, Tyler's daughter, just last weekend won the South Dakota State Youth Wrestling Championship. And so, yeah. um, we have a number of youth who do really amazing things. We had another young lady who at the high school level won her division in the state uh, wrestling championship. So Tyler and his daughter, are next weekend? Next weekend. Next weekend, will be in Council Bluffs for the Heartland National Duels. So um, there's a lot of positive things that happen on our reservation. 
And sometimes we get stuck on all the negative, but there is a lot of positive things. And I really believe that Makoche and there's other nonprofits that do a lot of work to push the reservation forward and, and change the system. So I don't want everyone to get hung up on that, but there, there's realities and then there's the hope that we, that we carry and that we want to push forward. So once again, thank you guys. And we'll, whatever questions. Thank you. Yes, uh, well, we're uh, happy to answer questions. You want me to answer it? Yes. You can okay. go ahead. That's, that's, that's a very, very, very good question. So the plant was initially built in 2010. And actually, we do some, some processing for the original owner. So the plant was built to process capons. So that was the original purpose of the plant. So um, it has a, a capacity around of 200, 150 to 250 birds per year. So we're, we're, not, we're not nearly, uh, let's say, 40% of, of getting there. Uh, in, those, uh, in those summer months that we process. So the idea is uh, getting more farmers and building on, on, on having the ability to run all year long. Also adding two shifts. We only have one shift at the moment, which is from 6.30 to 3.30 sometimes. But adding another shift would, would let us as a plant exploit more of that, of, that, uh, of that volume that we can at the processor. Does that answer your question? Or? Okay. this on. Okay. Uh, I have a question for uh, um, the Makochi folks up there. Do you mind uh, explaining the process of um, families coming to your facility and picking up? Like, do they have to sign up or something like that? Because mm -hmm. I am interested in something mm -hmm. of that scale. I finally have the ability to donate chicken and turkey and duck and things like that. So I'm curious. So what I did is, or what our social media team did for me, because I'm not very good on computers, but they, uh, we just put out a flyer and people signed up and they put in the, we'll have a form and just like with, it just asks simple questions. You have 4,200 square feet for the, your chicken tractor. Uh, do you have dogs that are in the neighborhood? Because where we live on a reservation, there's dogs everywhere. It's kind of crazy. but. Yeah, and then um, with my first week of class, I usually do an informational session where it's just, I'm gonna break down everything of what you need to do you, how to, what you all, you need to have eight weeks committed to taking care of your chickens. And it kind of dwindles it down, but it's just more of us, the people in the community will see it on social media and then just uh, apply, they attend, as long as they attend a class then, and they're committed, then they'll get the incent. I always mention incentives is the chicken tractor. We'll provide the chicken tractor to feed the chicks, everything. All the family needs to do is have electricity, water, and take care, take care of the chicks, if that kind of answers the question. Yeah. I have another question for Makochi. So what does a chicken for 49 days so what did they taste when, what, how many pounds they are in the only less than four well, weeks? Well, like I said, we get Cornish cross, we get the Cornish crossbirds. So the 49 to 56 days, um, we have, I usually, last year, I believe it was an average of like four, four and a half pounds a bird. Uh, we had some families that had, was it 6.9 pounds, they had some big birds. And some families would come in with a, like an average of three pound bird. After they've yeah, after they've been processed. I saw the tasty, how did people say how? The they taste, uh, the, I tell it, like whenever I first jumped on board, I didn't know that meat birds only takes, like a Cornish cross, 49 to 56 days. I thought a meat bird had to live a year or two. I never knew nothing about it. And just, I always heard, Nick Hernandez, our CEO, first thing, my first day on the job telling me, you, you would tell the difference in these chickens, the meat from a store-bought commercial chicken. And to me, I feel like I, with my 
personal opinion, I feel like you could tell a big difference in the taste. Thanks. I'm real curious about, I don't know if you have enough, if been enough time or enough data or in comparison to turnover with the employees. Like, do people stay? Is there a lot of turnover in this industry anyway? And then is there any comparison to how um, your, your culture of personal development as well as, you know, the environment of the plant itself? Is that, are you noticing anything in regards to turnover? And, and you know, keeping and attracting workers? Wow. That's, that's a hard question. <laughs> Sorry. If, if you don't no, know yet, awesome. it's No, fine. no, yes, yes. That's, that's a very, very, very good question. And we're, we're like Deli mentioned at the end, how the product is produced, our chickens from tree range or other farmers is, is very important, crucial for us. How we process it, crucial, right? Food safety, following the HACCP plan. Um, but we are not able to do it without our, our team members. Being seasonal is a challenge, just like any, any other, like expanding our plant so we have more capacity, adding equipment is a challenge. So um, this year we're so blessed that 60% of the team members that were with us last year, they're coming back. So that's, for, for being seasonal, 60% is, is very, very awesome. So, um, there's, there's key things I would say that play a lot of, of importance. We, uh, being a small scale processor, we work on being flexible. So what does that mean? So if there's a family member, Talia for example, she has a, 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 like three kids I think. If she needs to go out for a school occasion and it's from eight to 10, hey Delicia, I, you know, next week I have an activ activity with my kid, I need to be at school. Perfect, because once we have, you know, we cover the activities of that day, Talia can take that time off. So it's ra rarely seldom, like in, in bigger or larger processing facilities, you have some, some of that flexibility. Um, or, or they need a day off to take care of family issues. So we, we offer that flexibility. Um, as, as the nature of the business, you know, we're processing every other day, Mondays, Wednesdays, and, and Fridays. Um, also, compared salary-wise to that area in Northern Iowa, um, I believe we're very flexible, um, very competitive to the markets around. It's, it's challenging, like I said, we have puree poultry uh, like 30 minutes away from us in Charles City, which is a bigger plant. But I think the environment that we create or we work on creating at the plant with all of our team members, it's very crucial. And I, I, I believe that's part of, that's creating us to have more, more of our guys come back and be with us on, on our high season. And always thinking of being year round so that we can provide those, those hours for our team members. Right? Good question. Um, I have a question about um, just just improvements at the processing plant. Are you guys planning on um, doing controlled atmosphere stunning at some point? Um, and is there like a timeline around that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so um, continuous improvement, right? Like I mentioned before, two things to think about, continuous improvement. So um, we, so the, the facility that we have at Stacyville, and, and we can appreciate from the pictures that Delicia shared with us, adding a small scale CAS system there, it's very expensive, very, very expensive. We went to, and that's the reason that we visited um, IPPE 2024 in search of information on CAS system and being more aware of animal care and animal handling and animal euthanasia, right? So, Adding a CAS system there is it's it's a huge bottleneck and it's 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 very expensive, but I think as we con as we continually improve and move into these bigger facilities, we're we're going to be able to add a CAS system that will be like you mentioned, just friendly with the animal at the time of euthanasia. I would say a time period between now and and ten years. I don't want to. So, yeah. 
Hi. Um, I have two questions. Um, one is how do you work with your farmers to ensure that the birds are as clean as possible and fasted properly and all that stuff before they get dropped off? And the second question is, um, like yes or no, I guess, but um, when you're, you have parts left over when you're parting them out, like the spine and stuff, do you guys make any added value products like stock or um, offer that in some other way? I can answer you that question. Uh, about the first question, what, what is the first question? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> about, the, uh, I, about the zero tolerance. Oh, uh, it's important. <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted in the second. Um, we, right now, we, you can see, um, uh, right now it's not the slide, in our um, official page, we put uh, the restriction that we had. Usually, we encourage the farmers and also Tree Range now this uh, to take off the feed uh, between 18 to 24 hours. So also some, some farmers, they don't know about that. So after, because we, we usually, we give a review. When we give the product, we usually we say what is wrong with their chickens or no. And that is the reason because it's important to work with USDA inspector because sometimes he, she, he or she came down with us and explained to the farmer what kind of things they can improve. Also, like Arnulfo mentioned, we had a zero tolerance fecal. So we're taking care about that. So the, in the beginning of the season, we had a lot of troubles because a lot of a lot of farmers think that if they take off the feed, they are gonna lose weight. And that is a wrong idea that they had. So, and we're trying to explain them what is the importance because bringing a, a contaminated chickens is very hard. And all the employees here now that is very hard work because we need to train them. And sometimes, unfortunately, they need to, they, the inspector need to condemn those chickens. So that is important to know about that. And right now, we had uh, like a pamphlet, and also we had in our social media the, the following protocols before the, the farmers arrive there. And also, we remind them uh, through cell phone or through email. And the second question, what is that? <laughs> Sorry. The second question is, uh, uh, if oh. I'm not mistaken, is about value added, right? Okay. Broth and. Oh, OK. Uh, Sorry. Um, the, the second question is important because uh, some of our farmers, they want the frames or the bats. So some of them, we, we, for now, we don't, we don't do chicken blocks because like you, you can do now is a lot of protocols that we don't have right now, the installation and the equipment, but it's something that we want to do in the future. So, uh, for example, Tree Ranch and other customers, they want that we keep the frames and their bags and they take care about where they are gonna sell or where they are gonna add a value uh, to their product. And also about sometimes some of our uh, customers, they don't want nothing. So no, they don't want like a feed or giblets or the frames. And uh, we pay a rendering uh, company that is expensive, but we need to pay, uh, uh, they back from our facility because it's, that can be a cross contamination. So we clean everything and we sanitize everything, but that is something that we want to improve in the future to offer that service. I, just, I forgot to mention too that um, Arnoffel and the team at Stacyville is like our big, big brothers, big sisters. Um, we rely heavy on them for guidance, especially with the technical, the HACCP plans and the SSOPs and all these other technical documents that really um, been great in helping us grow and understand, you know, poultry and how to process it and how to raise it and, and be humane with it. So um, I just want to say thank you to Arnoffel and Delicia and the whole team, uh, Rehi, Diane, they, they really help us grow and we really lean on them a lot. So uh, just let them know that we appreciate them. <laughs> 